Hey everybody, West here. Um, was working on trying to make a boom or a tapered fuselage using the um, the Dollar Tree foam board, and uh, so I'm just doing a sample here at a piece of scrap. And what I'm going to do is show you um, how I came up with it, and um, the application is 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 probably not so limited. Uh, if you make them really small, uh, narrow, you can use them as booms. Uh, the maximum length is 30 inches, so that's probably a 60 inch wing. Um, I don't think it would work well on a 72 inch wing, uh, so you might have to lengthen or uh, yeah, add panel or something. But anyway, so what I have in front of you now is a, um, it's folded and taped. So I'll show you how that how that turned out. Okay, so the idea is that I wanted to make a real rigid, uh, you know, in all directions, uh, boom that's hollow, or a tail section, or, or tail, a tail boom, right? So this is tapering both in, in front to back height, and then also um, width tapering at the tail so you could have a uh, horizontal tail plane here That's, you know for instance there's a half right there that might be a little out of scale for this and this just happens to be a short chunk it's not a full panel so I'll get into showing you how I uh, how I did that, and again, uh, I still recommend as uh, as Ed does as well is to go ahead and tape everything first, and um, you can in this case if you're going to do a tail section, doing the tape uh, the tape is running in this direction, so use the the length of the panel to tape the same way you would do a wing. I don't, I don't see any advantage to going across. Um, yeah, that doesn't make sense. So keep it going with the long portion of the panel, uh, which is 30, and then uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so I'm going to untape it here and show you how I laid it out. It's really quite simple. You want to determine what kind of height do you want here. So you need to know this approximate number because that's each one of these uh, sections and uh, you probably already have the idea uh, how this is going to go down so the first thing I do for my panel is determine how wide do I want this top piece where it meets the fuselage and so this could be four inches wide right and this and or this could be three this happens to be um, three and three eighths approximately and so the measurement where I did my uh, score cuts for the paper on the inside was three inch. So just account for a three inch additional width on the a three eighths inch additional width on the outside. Okay. Um, so there. Let me pull this apart. Show you what's going on inside, and uh, as as always, the uh, foam board weighs, you know, basically nothing. So having having all this structure in here is uh, not a big deal. And I'm sure there's a variation too that you could just do your where these come together. You could just do your glue joint right here and make these pieces short. So they don't have to go all the way up and, and meet to the top. Um, it's adding more strength, more rigidity. Uh, it'll add support here in this section. Is that a big deal? Probably not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it as I have it cut and designed. And I'm going to hot glue it to the top here um, to, to bind to that top plate. Okay, so I started off with... A flat sheet, obviously. I drew center line marks right here, 
this is three inches wide and it ends up being three and three eighths on the outside dimension so account for that so whatever your outside dimension is let's say it's four you're want to you're going to want to make this three eighths of an inch less so on the inside you're going to be going uh, three and five eighths in this cut right here three and five eighths total that'll leave you with four inches approximately on the outside and I think that you can schmooze that in remember this is tapering so all you have, you know if it doesn't if it's too big too wide here and doesn't match up to your four inch fuse uh, on the outside dimension then you just chop some of this off and that then reduces this overall number and you, you may be able to get to that rather easy um, so there you go so I'm marking a center line and then I went out from there and I just chose how how wide I wanted these panel uh, sections uh, as you go and the last two widths were determined by uh, by guess and by golly actually so I'm not sure that there's a correlation but let me see if I can find one that's inch and a half and that's inch and a half roughly okay so here's the deal whatever this space is and this and half of that space would be half or this is half of so uh, this is inch and a half so this is inch and a half and that's the part that comes down in the center and uh, meets it so let's see if I have the same uh, correlation going on down here at the other end see if this makes sense so it's a little over three quarter that's it yeah so use um, use the half dimension so whatever you determine that top uh, top surface the middle section this top surface whatever you determine this paper scored section to be uh, use half that number and that determines the little return legs that go up and meet the top. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to I'm going to draw a center line because that's my glue line. I'm going to lay down a bead of glue, um, lay down a bunch of bead of glue actually, right down the center, and then I'm going to fold that in there, press it in, and throw some tape on it to hold it in place. And then I'll uh, I'll show you in here in a minute. All right, so uh, I think the glue gun might be ready. Let me see what we got here. I'm not sure why my glue gun is not advancing. Press it down. You can use a, uh, a board on that if you wanted to. Hold that in place a little bit onto a flat surface because you don't want to twist in this uh, this tail section, this tail boom. sure that it's standing upright and is on my center line mark where it comes together. And I'm trying to cool it off too by blowing on it.